Welcome to this demo on Tosca Continuous Integration in your pipelines. Tosca integrates with all build tools, and today we will have a look at a couple of examples on how we work within the Azure DevOps pipeline. In this example, we see different points where Tosca integrates with Azure DevOps, such as work items, bugs, and other areas. Today we will focus on the integration developers use to kick off Tosca tests to ensure their code committed into their version control systems is sufficiently tested. Tosca CI enables developers to create builds or jobs in their pipeline. This calls Tosca tests and pass back results to the build tools, giving them instant feedback. Tosca has its own multi-user repository with branching and versioning, enabling us to work with all build tools. We can map pipeline jobs to specific branches or versions of tests within Tosca, or pass config files to the execution machine, specifying the tests to be executed without needing to access the execution machine itself. We set up Tosca CI in different ways depending on your infrastructure and requirements. But here's a couple of examples. The first setup is used for developers to call and run tests that relate to specific branches of code in their version control tool. The second example enables developers to pass a config file that maps to different test executions within Tosca, giving the developer more control without needing to access the Tosca machine. In our first example, we will see a simple setup. We set up our pipeline job and map it to the Tosca branches and its tests. Here we can set up new jobs or change existing jobs to point to different Tosca tests as needed. In this example, we now leverage the Tosca CI remote service. We can pass through different config files that map to the required execution lists within Tosca, as you can see over here. Let's see how we can set up and leverage Tosca CI in Azure. Okay, so let's go through our two examples that we had a look at. Here's my desktop, and I'm gonna use my local machine as the developer's machine. We have a virtual machine over here, which I'm using as the Tosca machine, where Tosca is installed. If I come back to my local machine, you can see I have Azure DevOps open. I have all my setup complete over here. And if I jump through, these are my two different pipelines we're gonna look at today. The first one is the client where we're just going to use the Tosca CI client on the Tosca machine. No setup is required on the actual local laptop, which relates to my dev machine. And we're going to use the actual different ADO agents. So you can download these, of course, to your local machines. And the first one I'm going to use is this one called Tosca agent and branching. So this is where I have my pipeline jobs. And if I come into here, we're going to go into edit and here's my very basic pipeline job I set up that I'm going to run manually, but you can see I'm referring to a Tosca client on a specific machine, which is managed by these agents. And there's some arguments over there. So what this is pointing to is the machine that's running this agent here, which is my Tosca machine. Here's my agent which I've downloaded and set up and pointed it to my Azure instance. It's running, it's waiting for a call from the Azure pipeline, and it's gonna to point to a Tosca client. And this is what we are saying is you can set up different clients. It's simple copy paste. It's like about four meg, these actual clients. So it's very lightweight and it's just renaming them to what you want, branch one, branch two master, whatever it might be. If I double click and come into here, within here, it's gonna launch this exe, which is what you saw in the build tool. And there's some configurations you can pass through that relate to different workspaces. I'll open up that quick so you can have a look. There's the actual workspace. It's pointing to a specific branch, for example. So you can have an, a number of these and you can pass in different clients with different branches. So you can have that set up in advance and just swap them out from the build server as required within the pipeline. I'm going to close all this down, come to Tosca. So what that's mapping to is in Tosca, we have some settings. We have our execution section. These are all the different features within Tosca. I'm just gonna focus on the execution list, which is our integration with the Zures DevOps, with the actual jobs that you're running. And you can see there's one called continuous integration. 
and this is basically what I've done. If I open this up, there's a property that tells me continuous integration true. So when I run that build, it's going to point to my particular workspace, um, whether it's the master branch or a different versions of it you can set that up in the client and you can set up different execution lists that you want over here this is probably the most straightforward setup we can have if I click over here every time I do a run it, that build is going to create a new log file and a new execution list over here so this is the one I ran not long ago to see if it's all working you can see there I ran it and it created a new build for that last run and we can come back and check on this later so we close all that down. That's all we really need, the client and the execution list. And now within the build tool, over here, we come to Azure and we say, let's queue this off and we run that. This is my agent pool that I've set up and it's gonna open and run on the one that I've left enabled. I've disabled this one because that's for our second example. If we come over here, we can watch it run. This is all standard Azure functionality. It's going to go through, initialize the job, and then this is basically going to now kick into the Tosca CI client, which we pointed to over here with the arguments. Going to look for the workspace, which I mentioned. There's one I've called branch, and it's looking for the build root folder. That's where all, every time I do a build, it's going to save a version of the execution there with all the logs. It's going to check it out, do an update all, so any changes that the testers might have done or updates to the test will be done automatically. It's going to do an update all, make sure it gets the latest version of everything, goes to the right folder, looks for that execution list with that parameter set that says continuous integration, and now it's going to run it. So if I jump to my Tosca machine, you can see here it's already running. It's running an SAP test and an API test. So you'll see that in a second. It goes pretty quick, but I'll let it finish. While that's going, you can see I have some API tests running in the background there, just sort of flashed. So we do end-to-end -end automation with Tosca. So any automation that you want to run after a new build or a commit or as part of your pipeline, we can cover that with our scriptless automation, all model-based. And the pipeline can simply just point to it and kick off the different types of tests as needed. So there's my API automation that ran. There's my SAP Win GUI that ran. If we come to Tosca, we'll do this first. I'll do an update all. It's going to have a new build at the bottom. There's my results, all passed, so that's great. Close that down. Go to Azure. It's finished. Oh, still finishing. It's passed back the result in a JUnit format, and then it's going to publish it to Azure. You can see there it's still going. And when it's done, you can hit the back button. We can go to tests and we can see they're all green in this case. And don't worry, in the next one, I'm going to have a failure so you can see the log files that's passed back. So for our next example, we're going to do things a little different. This time, what we're doing is my local machine, which is playing the role of the developer's machine, is actually going to have the CI client over here. So I copied that over. Again, it's very lightweight, about 4 meg, and it's got the exe. That's all I really need. I don't need to change anything in the config. And the reason that is, is because what it's going to do is it's going to send a call to our Tosca machine, which has a remote service waiting for that call. We do also have the Azure agent running that tells Azure this is the machine. So Azure will pass it on to this machine. This machine will pick up the client, send a call to the Tosca machine, run the tests. Why have we done it this way? It's because this time the, ex the developer does not need to set up different CI clients within Tosca. Um, to have that control, they can actually set up different XMLs and point to different execution lists within the actual um, job itself. So you can pass in an argument that says, I want to pass in the smoke test XML, and it's going to tell Tosca this is the execution list to run the smoke test one. And you'll see that in Tosca in a sec. So I'll close that down. Let's have a quick look at Azure. Um, this time we are switching, and I've already changed it. I'm going to use the local machine, which is my build agent. I've disabled that one. If I come back to my pipelines, we're going to go for the remote one this time. I'm going to go to edit, have a look at the parameters, and you can see there's my local C drive where I just copied the client. I can pass in the arguments that relate to the machine. There's the IP, it's distributed, it's waiting to point into that service. There's the XML and the results um, to the location of my machine. So you can parameter up, you can pass all those in as arguments and change it up as needed. So let's hit before we hit run, let's go to Tosca, open that up. 
what's going to happen here is instead of using the continuous integration one, which we used the first time, I've changed it to false. We've got all of these execution lists as well. And what we're going to add is a second prop property that says not only am I looking for continuous ex execution, continuous integration true, but I'm also looking for execution type of smoke test, which relates to that XML. So you can set up as many as you want with different execution types. There's a few other ways you can set this up as well. And the XMLs can map to that. Then you can just swap the XMLs in and out as you need to run different executions within your different jobs in your pipeline. So these are the ones it's going to run. And like before, it's still going to store all the results in the build root folder here, as well as pass it back to Azure. The other additional thing is we have this remote service here waiting for that call from the dev machine CI client. So let's come over here. Like before, we hit the Q button. Let's run it and watch it run just like before. I'll click into the jobs and we can monitor it. And same as before, except you can see it's pointing to the remote service. Now the remote service has its own config that points to the workspace like we had before. We saw the different branches. The remote execution service also has that. So you can have quite a few different versions of setup. But the main thing is once we get this done, once we get it set up, you can have different naming conventions and make sure you stick to those and it'll avoid the developer needing to go back and forth to the Tosca machine. Let's jump over to our Tosca machine. You can see it's grabbed it. It's got the call. It's running this time. It's a web-based test, something a little different. And the API tests on SOAP, they're actually REST tests that are running. It's a coffee shop, coffee shop web service test. So it's going to go through. There will be a failure this time. There's going to be a business failure. And this way, you'll see the results, the execution logs that also get passed back to the build tool. So that's finished on this side. You can always check Tosca because it's the first one. To get the results, we can come in here, do an update all. There's an extra one at the bottom. Let's go into that very quick. There's a failure. There's a couple of failures, which is great. One for the web test, uh, for the rest, and one for the HTML test. So I won't look, won't look at them here because you're interested in the bull tool, but these results are in Tosca as well as within the bull tool. Let's jump back here. You can see there it's finished. It failed. So we can go back. Go to tests, and you can see there's my six tests, four passed, two failed. So only the failures send back the results, the logs from that side. So let's have a look at here. So there's the web base test, the HTML. And you can see all the log files, values that were entered along the way up until the point of failure. There's the expected and actual. It was just a verification check I did along the way. It's a business failure in this case, where the values compared were a mismatch. And there was also one from the web api so it sent off an api call for a coffee service and the expected and actual was different in this case over here but we have a number of configurations we can set up so hopefully that was helpful so you could see how tosca ci integrates with your azure devops chain